Hi, I'm here with Sarah Karesma again, and um, she shared our, her birth story with us um, and her experience with the Bradley Method in our last interview. And she's been gracious enough to speak with me more and share with us um, her like kind of career path change after becoming a mother and giving birth naturally and what she's doing now. And I don't even know these details. I actually am going to find out on my own. So I'm really super yeah. excited to yeah. find out because um, I love talking with that. birth nerds and people yes. who love this um, I love that. as well uh, because it's just so amazing. Um, so after you had your daughter, right? Um, what, 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 what was your profession before? What, 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 what did you do? Art. I was in the art world. Uh, I graduated with an art history degree and I was planning to go back and get my PhD and become a, a museum curator. Oh my God, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, at the time I was, I thought it was really cool then, but- um, a Different world, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it after, after Eleanor was born, what I realized is, you know, ultimately when you have a profession, there's gonna be sacrifices. And as a mom, I realized that those sacrifices were gonna be time with my kid. And so I really had this, this moment of reflection where, um, I didn't want, you know, because art is so kind of immersed in, in bureaucracy and wealth and money and, you know, the elite of Los Angeles. And I decided that I didn't want my time away from my daughter to be spent in that world. It just, it wasn't worth it to me. Um, and kind of simultaneously, I had this really amazing birth experience where I, um, was able to give birth in a hospital and yet I was still able to give birth the way that I wanted to give birth. It was very empowering. And I used a midwife up at UCLA and I'm not sure if it's okay for me to say her name, but since it's a shout out, I think shout it's fine. Out. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, um, I'll add, like, what is it? All publicity is good publicity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. good publicity. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I can do. So I, uh, Shadman is, is the, the one who delivered my daughter and she was, I mean, it she was. She attended good. your birth. You gave birth to your daughter. She I, yes, delivered I birth birth my daughter. daughter. Yes. She was Thank there you. as Thank your guardian you. and you. lifeguard. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, I, I birthed my daughter, but, but Sean Mon was, was the person who was, uh, who was my midwife and, you know, she was just so incredible and inspiring. And, um, it, that experience made me feel so good that it made me want to kind of give that to other women. I, I want other women to experience that, that, you know, especially women who are uh, unsure about home birth or birth center birth, and they feel more comfortable in a hospital setting. I think that, uh, you know, hospital midwifery programs are a really nice way to kind of uh, be the best of both worlds. Yeah. And that's something that I really feel needs to grow. I think it's, we'll talk about that. There's like a little bit of not, I think we need more supports for that, but I think it starts yes. with, so then you have one set of education and you had to go back to school. Yeah, I had to start from scratch basically because like I, I had an art history degree and so not a lot of science uh, classes. Art history does not lend itself. Bio, organic to, chemistry, oh God, things microbiology, like that. microbiology. I, if I never have to see another petri dish, I will be totally okay with that. Microbiology <laughs> like almost was that that almost <laughs> um and so but yeah, so I had to go back and because I had basically avoided all science. Oh yeah. Up until then, you know, I had taken I, I think an anthropology class was my lab science before. Which the other sciences, the heart, the hard sciences don't. Yeah. Be yes. <laughs> yes. A yes. real science. Real science is yeah. what they. Yeah, I think that they call it real science. And so yeah, I had to take you know all all the anatomy, the physiology, biology, chemistry, all of it. Um, I say that takes an enormous amount of courage. Yeah, it, I mean, I and you I wanted to do it, but it, isn't that like to just not be like to like be like just switch directions? Is yes, you know. yes, yes. I it was I you know it, it did it took some amount of courage, but um, 
I think more so than anything is is once once I got that that you know seedling of an idea in my head of what I wanted to do, I was determined. So there was so much determination and um, so much like you know inspiration, and it I I never once doubted doubted my choice ever. Yeah, I can see that in you. No. So where are you in your education right now? So I'm a year into nursing school. So I have, um, I have another year of nursing school left. And then I have, uh, after that, I'll have about a year and a half left to finish my uh, MSN, my master's in nursing. And then I will be eligible to sit for the certified nurse midwifery certification. Cool. And, and then so you're going to school, you're mothering and parenting, mm -hmm. um, you're a wife, right? And all these things. And you're also, you also have another work. You work at one of our local LA hospitals, right? Yes. yes. So I work at, at a, a hospital in Los Angeles in the, it's on the maternal health unit, which consists of uh, labor and delivery, postpartum and NICU. And um, I am a support person for pregnant and postpartum parents and their babies. Yeah. So you see people both during pregnancy mm -hmm. and also um, immediately following delivery. Yeah, yeah, right. Not really actually in the labor process mm -hmm. right now or birthing process, but in these yeah. two windows in between, you kind of them before and yeah. after. Um, giving them that one-on-one, -on -one, like a lot of psychological support, listening. Yes. Yes. Just because uh, what I think people are starting to realize, especially during this time when, you know, pre-pandemic, people had a lot of support when they were, or they could have a lot of support. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially when they were, um, you know, going through the labor process. And then also once their baby was born, they could have their parents, they could have their spouses, they could have their friends, you know, come in and visit and talk to them. And, and they don't have that right now. Mm -hmm. So they basically have, they are, and, you know, every day it's changing for a while. It was, you know, they could have two visitors a day or, you know, two people, two visitors a day, including their partner. And now it's back to just the partner. And so uh, I've, I have seen the emotional toll that that takes on, on people because as much as, you know, your partner is important and they are, you know, the most important person that's there during your, your laboring process for you, but it's exhausting. And by the time that baby is born, everybody is exhausted. And so, you know, not being able to have other people come in and, and give you a hug and bring you food and, you know, sit and, and celebrate you and listen to your, to your story, whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm. um, that's taken, that's taken a toll on parents and, you know, they're, they're tired and they're, they're, they're sad or they're really happy and they want to share that with somebody. And so yeah. I think that I've, I've been able to, I've been able to, um, step into that role a little bit for people and it's been it's been really awesome yeah it sounds like so illuminating in a different um way you know what I mean like you see a different part that everyone assume would happen with a family or maybe there so I think that gives you a really different um uh viewpoint one of the things I just thought about when I was thinking about that like one of the things I talk about in classes is um you know, since you're right now training as a nurse, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the midwifery is a master's on top of that, right? That's mm -hmm. a separate program. And um, as a nurse, I just wondering um, what you learn about labor and birth as a nurse. Have you even gone into that? Or is it, is it a, a general thing as a nurse? And then you don't even really focus on that. That would happen for a nurse coming on the labor floor and when she got in the hospital. Or so I have so many thoughts about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> So in our curriculum, in order to sit for the NCLEX, which is the, the RN certification exam after nursing school, um, our curriculum is four weeks for all of maternal health. Four weeks? Four weeks. For all of maternal health? Yeah. 
So it's interesting because our a nursing school semester is eight weeks. And so we've, and we spend, uh, let's see, 32 weeks in med surge. So we do 32 weeks for med surge. And then pediatrics and maternal health share eight weeks. So we do four weeks of maternal health, which includes all of pregnancy, all of labor and delivery, and all of postpartum, including breastfeeding. Oh. Four weeks on that. <laughs> and then four weeks on the rest of childhood. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I mean, this might be, you know, a controversial statement, but I do not, I don't feel like uh, that's enough time. I don't feel like it's enough time. And um, I think that, that especially for nurses who that's what they want to do, they don't come out prepared to do that after nursing school. Is nursing school more of a broad, like, is, is, is it preparing you just for any type of nursing, wherever you might be? Yeah. yeah. Right. So there's, right. so there's, there's no specialization in nursing school. The only specialization that you can get is through your preceptorship. So the last right. class of nursing school is a preceptorship. And that's in a hospital. That's in a hospital. Okay. And so, and that's a full eight weeks of, um, you have a, a nurse who is precept, who is your preceptor and you spend a uh, full, you know, full shifts with them doing what they're doing. And, uh, you know, if you, if labor and delivery is what you are, you know, hoping to go into after graduation, then you, uh, you do your preceptorship with the labor and delivery nurse, you know, if med surge is what you're interested in going into after graduation, then you are with a med surge nurse. Um, so then it just, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it just sounds like then, like it's a general program being a nurse, right? And so you're not really getting anything with like labor and delivery of, of what birthing women need or people right and so that it, a lot of it's going to depend on where you land what hospital you land in and then what the culture is in that facility as far as a nurse what you know or unless you go do your own continuing education or yeah whatever. so and that's why you know a lot that's why obviously when you want to become a midwife or you know, a certified nurse midwife um and you want to work in a hospital it requires an extra, you know, year and a half of solely maternal health education because right. they understand that you are not prepared to deliver babies when you graduate from nursing school. Right. You're not prepared to take care of pregnant women when you, you know, graduate from nursing school. It's just, it's not possible. Right. Um, well, you've been trained to be a nurse. As a midwife, yes. you're not really a nurse. I don't know why they put nurse in there because you're becoming you're a midwife. Practicing. So you have your, your basic uh, medical education is as a nurse, and then your graduate program is going to teach you to become a midwife. Mm -hmm. so let's just get rid of the nurse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it confuses people. It's very, um, it's, so you're going to be a midwife. People. And, it's, and you know what? I will say that one of the biggest gripes that I've heard from, from midwives is that they still feel like they are, um, they don't feel as though they're treated equally to doctors. I mean, they are, yeah. they're not given the same respect as doctors in the hospital are, are given, even though they are doing the same, you know, they're delivering babies, they're prescribing medication, they are, you know, doing the prenatal checkups, they are doing all of the things that the doctor does, yet they're yeah. still considered a nurse. Because I think that nurse is in there and the medical world is hierarchical. Right. So there's yeah, a yeah. hierarchy like the military and mm -hmm. each person goes to the next. Right. Like nurses are, are yep. do what the doctors want. Right. In a way. So. Um, so, yeah, I think they need to get the nurse out of there. Anyways, <laughs> this is my personal thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, words, words do a lot. Yeah. Words do a lot. So then so then the, it may the, that you're going to be learning a lot about um, when you go on into your midwifery training. Um, we be more specific, but the nurses in general, I guess the point I want to get to is that nurses, um, themselves, what they learn and how they'll, how people are treated on the hospital floor is really going to have to do with the ethos of the, that particular hospital. Absolutely. Probably most. Absolutely. 
And um, what I'll say right now is that it's, it's a really interesting time because again, going back to this time, this pandemic era, um, there's already a sense of, you know, people are coming in and there's a sense of, of fear just surrounding being in a hospital in the first place. And then on the other end of that spectrum, you have the healthcare professionals who, you know, whether it be CNAs or nurses or doctors, they're feeling overworked and they're feeling underappreciated. And so kind of on both ends of that spectrum, you're seeing a lot of sensitivity, a lot of um, people being emotional, a lot of a, a lack of assurance on both ends. And um, it's, it is, it has an effect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that gets me to the, when I think about it, it's so important that the people around um, a pregnant uh, mother or person that they are educated and know how to support the best they can, because um, even in the best case scenario, it wasn't perfect, but right now it is a little challenging. Uh, it's a lot. For, it's, yeah. it's very imperfect right now. It's very imperfect. And it's, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I, I wish I could say that I, I saw things, you know, I saw these, these issues being recognized and, um, you know, taken into consideration and, you know, but they're, they're really not being considered. I mean, there's larger systemic issues, right? I mean, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just wondering, um, well, I mean, you can tell me where you want to go here in terms of like, um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about it's it, what I what I find interesting is my own experience kind of um, juxtaposed, juxt, you know, in this juxtaposition with with what I experience kind of as a third party. Exactly. Third party. Your personal versus what yeah. you're observing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, what I will say is that much like what I spoke to in my in my first interview, um, preparedness is everything in this situation and confidence in, in what you know and what your body is able to do, it makes a huge difference when you come in to give birth in a hospital. Because in a hospital, uh, there is a timeline, you know, there is a timeline. And if you are not, if you don't understand that timeline and you don't understand what you are, your rights actually are as a birthing person, then you can be talked into a lot of things that um, aren't necessarily necessary. And what I've seen is a lot of a lot of a lot of parents not having the birth that they envisioned or not having the birth that they um, assumed that they would have because they didn't know they had options. And so if you know, my one piece of advice is to, to people considering a hospital birth is, is come prepared and come, um, with confidence and, uh, know, know what your body is able to do and be prepared to have those difficult conversations if you need to have them and don't be scared of them. Um, if you want more time to push, then you should ask for more time to push. You know, if you've been pushing for two hours and somebody says that somebody starts to talk about C-sections, you need to know what you, what you can do. And, um, because what I've seen is that interventions become kind of a, this, um, you know, waterfall where, you know, first you're told that you need to be induced because, you know, you're not, your, you, your labor isn't progressing. Well, that's augmented. Induced we to start labor, right? Or yeah. you're talking about if your water breaks and like labor hasn't started, then you may or need just to be, if, you know, if you're 42 weeks along and you go in and you, your labor hasn't started yet and, and, you know, you. 42 weeks. Okay. That would be generous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's, uh, not, that's not happening. 
<laughs> and you know, then then inductions start being talked about and epidurals. And then once that starts, you know, once that starts, then and uh, you're not getting the or the perfect the your team is not getting the results that they want, then C-sections start getting uh, talked about. Yeah. And that does something to your brain. Just ultimately, once you realize that, that that is a possibility and you're headed in that direction, then fear starts setting in and yeah. uh, lack of confidence in your body's ability to do what it needs to do. And, um, and you know, thank goodness for interventions. Thank goodness that they exist and that they are there for people who need them. Yeah, they're not bad in and of themselves. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm sure that there, are, you know, I, I, I believe that there is absolutely a time and a place for them. It's just that uh, your baby coming should not depend on what is convenient for the hospital. And um, I, you know, it, it breaks, it breaks my heart. It makes me so sad to see women who come in and, and they, they want to deliver vaginally. They want to breastfeed. They want to, you know, have skin to skin contact and they are unable to have any of those things because of, of interventions. And then, you know, inevitably breastfeeding becomes difficult because of a whole slew of reasons. And, uh, and then, and they're sad. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's too bad. It's, it is too bad. And so I will say that, um, that the taking a, taking a birth class and being prepared and knowing what to expect is, uh, there is no, no value can be put on that. Well, let's qualify birth class. Cause there's a lot of different ones. I don't let think. Yes. Yes. I, mean, I teach what I teach because I think there's not an easy way to do it. I mean, for me, I'm like a weekend intensive, a hospital class. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and I, you had home birth. Right? Be proud. Um, I had one of the child at the hospital, and then I had one child at, at home. Mm -hmm. And Man. what was? How did? I mean, what was your? How did your experience differ from those two? Oh, you're gonna ask me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm interview interview now. Now. You're interviewing me. Now okay. I'm interviewing um, you now. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's. So so the reason why she's twelve weeks. Is because I want to take a Bradley class. Someone told me about this pre-internet, right? This was 1998 was my first, when I first gave birth. Mm -hmm. um, and so I took from a teacher who taught a shortened series. And I think maybe she was just trying to, a new teacher trying to cobble a class together and it wasn't. So I did have an unmedicated birth, um, but my husband was not prepared to support me because she didn't do all the things that I do in my class. Mm -hmm. But I make you guys do all the things, <laughs> all the things that I make nurse, you and learn. Nurse right? Susan, who can forget Nurse Susan? That's right, Nurse Susan, which is hard to do right now with the pandemic. That's the only thing I do. I do miss doing Nurse Susan, uh, but everyone does labor rehearsals. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm very uh, yeah. So that birth, I would say, had unnecessary suffering, mm -hmm. and my that my first daughter, she did. Um, they took her away but now i know there's no reason to do that because her breathing was not quite right and all they should just do have, have skin to skin right um but uh, yeah so that actually i was separated from her for about over about three hours um and it was very difficult for my husband i mean i think he was i bled a lot he was uh, really um concerned and i don't want people to go through what i went through in that birth although i just saw the birth high i will say yeah yeah. Even despite that, I have my kids absolutely. And then even when she's gone, like all effusive on the nurse, thank you so much. Yeah, the yeah I'm like, medicated birth high. It's Still had a birth high, yeah. um, but I remember being back in my in my hospital room and just feeling crushed all by myself. So think about what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Like my husband, I sent him off with my daughter and just feeling absolutely devastated, right? Devastated. So I really understand that feeling of devastation. Um, yeah, my second birth, I ended up, I had an OB at first, but then halfway through, she said something about stopping breastfeeding when the child got teeth. And I was just like, you know, a baby, when babies start, and I was like, I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand why I'm here. No, um, no and this I is had not for me. <laughs> I had interviewed so many midwives and so many OBs. And finally I connect with a friend and she gave me her midwife's name and even though my husband was afraid of a home birth like you were saying with your husband 
because I did bleed a little bit after and you know it was a difficult experience he wasn't as prepared as yeah he should have been made to be um although he's loving and wonderful and I'm really glad he was there um he did the best he could yeah absolutely. um absolutely uh yeah so we switched to a, a midwife when I met her I just felt like an arrow pierced my heart I just felt like this like I don't know if it was a karmic thing or love or what I don't know what it was but um yeah was that's, so we ended up having a planned home birth and they barely got there in time it was almost it was almost it was almost an unplanned unattended unassisted birth and they so got there 15 minutes she was born it was like you know it was okay it was good and so my other question, and I find this interesting because you, you have had both of the experiences that, that we're discussing. Yeah. Um, Elation, really support, yeah. good, good. Right. And then also, you know, doing, but then also yeah. trauma, I would say birth trauma, honestly. Okay. Absolutely. So did it affect breastfeeding at all? Like were, was there differences in breastfeeding between your first two? Absolutely I mean, not. Your first, I your feel first like, birth. I feel like, no, not at all. Um, my daughter never had a problem breastfeeding. So that's why I always feel like, I think birth can have an impact on, on breastfeeding mm -hmm. sometimes. Absolutely. But I also, but that's why I also spent a lot of time with our meditations and, um, really making sure you're connected with your baby. Mm -hmm. And, um, because I think that, that connection in pregnancy with your child, that connection, even if you have something difficult, an experience can make a big difference. Absolutely. Like I know my, I think my daughter always felt my commitment. She knew it. Yeah. Yeah. She knew, it. She knew we were going to do it. Even though we did something, even though I had a difficult experience. I mean, I kind of, I think I kind of, this sounds going to sound a little woo-woo and weird um, because I do believe in past lives and stuff, but I think that she, some of the reasons why what that made my birth difficult, which are not all things I'm going to divulge on here, but just a history of past trauma. Mm -hmm. I think she was a very gracious soul to come in to be there for me to move through. Because having an unmedicated birth, that power I felt, even with the challenges immediately postpartum, um, was really important part of um, beginning a sexual healing for me, which yeah. was culminated in the second birth of my, Absolutely. Absolutely. Of my uh, other child. Yeah, birth can be really healing, I think. It can be traumatic, right? So I it think it's both, of those thing, it's both of those things, I think that, um, that's why it's important to me. It's really part, so part of your sexuality, your identity as a person. Yes. Um, so it has a powerful influence on each person that goes through it. Absolutely. I, Not, I, at least you haven't got sidetracked. How do we get sidetracked? I don't know. I mean, we're, we're just, we're just talking. We're, we're having, we're <laughs> having a great conversation and I love it. I, and you know, it's, I, I just, I, I love, I love hearing I love hearing hospital success stories and I want to hear more hospital success stories. Honestly, I, I, because, um, you know, right, right now I feel like if giving birth in a hospital, it's so hit or miss if you have a great experience or a terrible experience. And I hear almost an equal amount of both. In fact, before I had my baby, before I had Eleanor, you know, I had so many people tell me their horror stories of giving birth in a hospital. It's I, yeah. I probably heard more horror stories of giving birth in a hospital than I did, you know, success stories or, or beautiful, you know, wonderful, successful birth stories. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I want, I, I, I want to, I want more women to have success stories. I want more women to feel empowered by their birth and not traumatized by their birth. Yeah. And you can have a really good hospital. Um, yes, yes. But I think that you need to know, you need to understand the institutionalized setting and the rules. You need to know how to navigate, navigate am 100%. amongst that. And not being scared. You know, there, that was another thing that when I mentioned nurse Susan, like I wasn't kidding, like <laughs> nurse. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, we, you know, we had this birth rehearsal in Susan's class where you pre you pretended to be a nurse and we had to kind of navigate around you yeah and you know you were um you were demanding things of us and you were giving you know it, giving us you know terrible scenarios and and all of these things and actually it, at the time it was humorous, but then actually going into that, into that experience, I knew why you did it because that really can be how it is. 
Like you can, you, there are parameters that are put in place and it is very hard to navigate those parameters. It can be very difficult. And if you are prepared and if you are, if you have your support, support person is prepared, um, then your choices open up much more. Yeah, I think it is really important. Um, and I don't think that those who are invested in the hospital system tell new parents right off, this is the things you need to do. I mean, I think, you know, and it's hard for me to know with midwives in the hospital or OBs, but I know with a home birth midwife, they're, they're right away saying, you need to do this with your food. You need to do this, you know, most of the time making sure. Um, so I can think that's the, the responsibility of, of the rest of us as mothers, um, whether we're, you know, childbirth educators or becoming certified midwives, nurse midwives, um, that we're sharing that and really holding that container for women mm-hmm. um, and dads too, because you know that I think that uh, dads well, or partners or, part of it. or, you yeah. know, whether, you know, your co-parent um, is really involved in your, um, yeah. Because I've had a number of lesbian couples too. And so it's really yeah. nice. I love it. I'm always like, oh, you got it over the husband coach childbirth label of the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you understand it means husbandry. Like being yeah. with somebody. No, I, love it. I always, I, and I, I'm really like actively trying to say birthing, birthing person as opposed to, you know, uh, mo- mother. Because I, I know that there are now, there are people who, of, of all genders who are giving birth. And um I still like the term mother and the reason why yeah. is because to me, mother is not about gender. Mm. Mother is about the relationship with the child and how the child views that person. So you're not assigning gender to the term you are using. No, I think, I think it, I think it, I think people engender it, but I think the fact is that it describes how a child looks upon this person. I love that. But I, I mean, I think, every, I think it's room for every phrase. Like people want to say breathing person if they want. I'm like, whatever, do whatever. It's all good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's just be flexible. We'll help all, and we'll help. Let's be flexible. It's all good. No one has to be rigid. No. Well, is there, is, I don't want to take all your time, but I just want to see if there's anything like, it, it, it sounds to me as a midwife, you're going into this because um, you really want to make a difference in this time period. You know how important it is. Yes. Um, and you're witnessing now that a lack of support yeah yeah uh there's just an inherent lack of support in an institutionalized system and it's not community centered i think mm-hmm. that there's um i think sometimes even family doesn't know quite how to support no you know bringing family isolating it can be very very isolating and that's the last thing that you want going into being a, a new parent is that feeling of isolation yeah um and so you know i think that the more people who can enter the birth you know birth work kind of with the um with the best interest of that woman at you know in mind the better and i think again i'll reiterate i think that midwifery programs and hospitals are fantastic and I would love to see more of them I would love to you know be a part of that becoming more normalized because I think right now it's there there's not enough of it and um my understanding is that often gets outvoted by either admin or other doctors that are in the in the system do you think that's true or Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there need to be midwives in every hospital. I mean, it's ridiculous that there's not a midwifery program in every single hospital. I agree. I I agree fully. And um, you know, and we could go on and on about the history of 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 Western medicine and that's men. another interview. Yeah, we <laughs> could go on and on and on about how women got pushed out of that and yeah, how, how terrible it is. But you know, I think that I would love to end this on a positive note. And yes. Let's do that. I have, I have lots and lots of hope for um, for the future, and I think that Absolutely. if anything, this pandemic has shown us that um, you know how it, how important it is for women to feel supported. And um, you know, I think that I hope I, I I hope going forward that that becomes the norm. 
Absolutely. I mean, we are making progress. It's just very slow. It's yeah. Slow progress. And it you know, you take three steps forward and a couple steps back and then, you know, but it'll happen. I, I, I trust, I trust that we'll get there. I trust that we'll get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any last thoughts of um, what you want new parents to know or as a more thing as a professional, I guess. Yeah, you know, I think I I would I re I would reiterate my my last thoughts from the other interview that coming be as prepared as you can and be confident and and trust trust your body and trust the process and um you know have people who have your best interest around you. Yeah, I think you have to look for those supports. They're not inherent. We don't have we have a lot of systemic issues that make it difficult for pregnant people um and that that preparation takes time absolutely uh, yes. it's not, it's not yes. just a google search no um, no 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 it's not a google search it's it's you know and there's something to be said for that even if it's over zoom there's something to be said for that connection you know absolutely that people. and um whether it's with your your teacher or whether it's with your husband or whether it's with other people who are taking the same class as you are you know knowing that 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 you um, that you're not alone, and that there are are people who are rooting for you, and there are people who are going through the same thing as you're going through, and there are, you know, people who who genuinely want the best for you and your baby. I think that that it, it there's a massive amount of value there. Yeah, and I think making sure that you have those people around you, whether that's your partner or your cousin who's going to support you, or your mother, or that that person is really knowledgeable. And prepared and not just assuming they know no that knowledge no. is not inherent it's been broken for a long time and we've lost it you were lucky you had a mother that that knew those things yes yeah right? but she that's was... rare most most mothers if i think about my mother oh my gosh i didn't even tell her i was having a home birth um, <laughs> maybe she found out afterwards so bless her heart you know what i mean she's a you know a good person yeah, but you know what i mean like hard. that's not the same for everybody right so no, it's not it's you not. need to look out for yourself in the United States. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. because there's not absolutely. systemic things, unless you're lucky. You were lucky to have a mother who yeah. you trusted that sent you in a direction. A lot of people don't have that at all. Yeah. And also, I mean, if you want to breastfeed, take a, take, you know, either take a class that includes breastfeeding or take a, take a breastfeeding class because that it's, it's not something that you know, that's a learned skill for both you and baby, you know, baby yeah. has to learn how to do it. Mom has to learn how to do it. It's yeah. not something that just magically happens. And so I, you know, I think that that's lots and lots of people understand the benefits of breastfeeding, but they find it difficult to do. And so it's, um, I would say definitely get that, that education in there too. And same thing I would say is I, is that there's a lot of things that can undermine you. Yep. And so if you can take away the things that might undermine you, that makes that makes it more likely that you're going to achieve what you want to achieve. So yeah. you have less, less regrets, feelings of, you know yeah. what I mean? I think it's important. That can be yes. painful, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, pr um, being prepared. I think that that is always my biggest, always my biggest uh, takeaway from your class, from my own birth and from what I see in the hospital is um, being prepared leads to confidence and confidence leads to better outcomes. Ah, uh, well, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you. I had I such a this has been very inspiring for everyone. It's been yeah. like absolutely so delightful talking to you. Same. Um, and just hearing Same. what you're thinking and yeah. um yeah, you're such like a warm fuzzy fuzzy for us, you know. I'm glad. You are. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love seeing you. I love talking to you and I'm so glad that you're still doing it because um, you know, every every woman deserves a you in their life. Oh, thanks. I just hope that I have want to be um that supportive person that that person that helps each of you come into yourself you as are a mother and father right you are co-parent all you those are. things it's like amazing oh I, and it, like you know just just talking to you kind of gives me a little dose of those those hormones just because it like brings back all of those go and in, go into work inspired today you're doing totally. good in the world you're totally doing good Totally. Yeah. Uh, well, I know you have work and I just want to say thank you. It's been delightful. Yes. With you, yes. Again. you too. All right. Thank you so much, Susan. Bye. Bye.